Welcome back today guys, thank you guys for stopping in. Look, we're working on the planer, but we're actually doing something fairly more exciting than normal. We're changing a row unit, because this little row unit right here is tweaked around a little bit. So I've never seen this before, but most of the time when you have splitter planers sort of made in this area, usually your front set of row units is wider than your back half row units, and that is the opposite with this. So when you get to turn in this planer in tight areas, your two outside row units on the back half always get plowed into piles of dirt or rocks. I think that is what has caused the tweaking issue on this row unit, is it has just gotten hit from wide turns and it just gets it's the dummy. It just, it protects the rest of the planter. So right before you guys have came along, as you guys saw in the last video, we have all of these trays and all that that we need to get rid of. And you guys can see the excavators made it here too. But we are hauling some dirt. And for whatever reason, the dirt we have on our farm, we can put it right in the back of our dump truck. And we can raise our bed all the way up. And this, well, I wonder why it's sticking in there. He overloaded the thing way too much. No wonder it didn't fall out, because he jam-packed the thing. Only like three to four scoops with the excavator is enough. That's all this truck wants, is like three to four. And as you can see, he has really packed the thing. Not to mention all the dirt he's already dumped out on the ground. But anyways, he brought the excavator over here to unload the thing, and then the truck won't start now. And it, I don't, don't ask me why, it's got fuel, it is fine, it's just when it gets hot, it don't like to start anymore. So we said, screw that and we'll work on the planter. So when we bought this overpriced planter, they, get, they felt generous enough to give us a free row unit that was also seized up. But on the free row unit, everything is straight. So we're going to change out row units right here. And we are making it into a great planter, ain't we? Well... I just couldn't sleep at night because all the seed disc openers are touching and this one would not touch. Yeah, it's and one row unit and we had a spare one because I almost bought a new one. But I thought, nope, we've got one. Let's put it on there. If we put a new one on here, it wouldn't match. Yeah, the paint would just, it'd be all messed up. Yeah, and it, depending on where you order, they're black or green. And so it just wouldn't match. We needed the rusted effect. Yeah. From Central City, Kentucky, the home of True Vine Farms, the one and only Farmer King. I told you I had a good feeling that this row unit, there was something wrong with it. It looked good. Yeah, it looked, well, it looked like a rusty piece of scrap metal, but... Looks can be deceiving. Well, it, my, the looks leaned up to its reputation, or proved its reputation. Well, at least we got it all on there until we realized it. Yeah. It's, it's Show screwed up. You guys may not be able to see on camera, but you can see how your box part of the row unit's running that way, and the shank is sort of running that way. Part is straight, but this part is probably two to three inches over this way. So that means your gauge wheels are running like this, and your, everything else is running like that. The order from Sloan Express, order a new shank for $300. And we're also short on two gauge wheel arms. So we'll have to, we get to make another order. Mm -hmm. How much money have you spent on this thing so oh, far? Oh, this is going to return probably 20 bushel an acre fixing this one oh, row yeah. unit. 20 bushel an acre. We're going to pay for this in one season. We're going to pay for it in one acre. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long term investment. Uh, we probably spent probably seven to eight thousand on it so far in parts. I don't know. Long term investment. We're gonna keep this thing for years. I'll, when I'm 80 years old, we'll be planting with this thing. That's when we'll pay for it. Yep. <laughs> Here we go again, fixing our screw ups. Now, as you can see, in this area where it is contained, where dirt is contained in a red container here, gravity has shut off and is no longer operating. 
So we embedded the new gravity system sitting right there and it is walking its way right over here to fix the issue. Well, that project is gonna continue. We got probably about three quarters of dirt out. Just that last top piece all the way up there in the top corner has decided it's not gonna fall out. And that is where, well, the excavator's not a good thing to be using for this occasion. We need to use the backhoe sitting over here. But remember that flat tire we still ain't fixed on the thing yet? It's still flat. So we can't use the backhoe because that excavator bucket is so wide that we cannot get a good spot to get the bucket even across the whole bottom of the bed to where we need a smaller bucket on there so we can scrape better because if we keep doing this crap we've already knocked a hole in the floor of the bed with one of the teeth it'll just keep going anybody got any solutions it's a wood bed with metal sides on having dirt slide keep things sliding because something's not working in the dirt it's moist, but it's not mud either. Please, if you have any solutions, comment down below. See, look at there, I'm a genius. Just let it sit there all day, bake in the sun, and it's like lovely. It's like 75 degrees out here. It feels great on this Thursday afternoon. But, got everything parked back away in the pit. Like I said earlier, just so you guys are ref a refresher, or if you're new to the channel, you see this pit right here? Go back to some of the videos this summer where we cleaned out all this pit, because this used to be a hog barn sitting over top of that concrete pit. So we cleaned it all out to store equipment in there and hopefully this summer where we find magic money we may have to go rob a bank to get the funds or we may start a GoFundMe page, who knows, we have all kinds of options. But we're going to build a building over top the pit so you know it has like a roof and stuff. Maybe we can get a big fold out door that costs more than what the building's worth and then who knows we have all kinds of luxury items on it. So next up on the list is we have a big delivery coming tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday and we have our first seed delivery it's supposed to be coming as long as it's not raining. So that means we need the forks on the good old tractor. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the little break away from the planer. I definitely enjoyed the break, but we're on the final stretch. Other than that far roll that ain't even existing down there, we're on the final stretch of getting this thing done. Even though I've said that about 16 times already, I really think we're on it now. We're almost done with the row units. We still got a little bit ways to go. And here we go again. Said final stretch. We're not even close. But we get to at least do some fabricating now. Something different than working on row units. So you see this plate right here I'm sticking my hand. You see how this U-bolt is really helping hold the planer and support the planer. Like how this one is twisting and bending over here and just about to snap. Well we're going to lift this plate up. We're going to weld it to the bottom of the frame there and then we're going to put another plate right here on the side of the frame and weld it to here and then we'll do the same thing over here. So why don't we get some action going and get rid of all this talking.
Well, would you look at there? We got it. Well, the front side is welded. We still gotta weld this back half on this side of the tube frame. But look at how level that planer is sitting across there now. It doesn't look like a wave going through there. That might, that really helped a lot. It helped surprisingly a lot because if you've seen it before, it's like a downhill slope that way. So yeah, that that made a difference. We fixed it. We finally fixed it. And we didn't light anything on fire because there's one hydraulic leak on this whole planter. And it just happened to be where we're doing all the welding. That's just our luck, I guess is what you could say. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back. We got all weekend coming up after tomorrow to work on this thing. We got seed deliveries coming. And then are you going to rehearse your practicing of the seed deliveries? Because we know what happened last time. We gave you a pro box and the tractor. I don't think we're getting pro box this time. Well, we can put a replay in what happened. But yeah. it wasn't a good day, was it? We had to buy more seed. He dumped the box and then I got a splinter in between my fingernail and finger. And that hurt real bad. I still remember that day. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Remember, faith, family, farming. See you in the next one.